So I've had another rethink on my track plan for my new layout. I'm going to cut back even further on the amount of track I'm laying down. There is that very popular phrase, less is more. At least that's what I tell my wife. Hello YouTubes, welcome back to Scott Rails. I had originally planned to have two complete loops going around my entire layout. Decided that was a wee bit too much track, so then I cut it down to one loop with maybe a point to point in the middle. But I've done away with the point to point as well. For myself and my wife, we kind of want a nice balance of track and scenery and infrastructure. So that's what we're going with, especially since my wife really likes doing all the modelling stuff and I want to give her as much space as possible, okay? So today I'm going to start planning the civilian infrastructure and I'm going to use the PAS system, paper and sharpie, to plan it all out. Before I get to that, I do have a slight update. On the last video, I managed to destroy my favourite cheapy Backman Loco, my Chessy system, uh, GP, GP38, GP40, let me know what it is. Talking about not knowing what locomotives are called, Mike, what, hold on a sec, Mike6206, link up there to his channel, let me know that this was in fact a, uh, I've forgotten, hold on. SD45, apparently. So that's what that's called. And I really like this. And the problem I had was it wasn't going around this track. So I've spent the last day tweaking, not twerking. That's a different channel. That's a weekend channel. No, I was tweaking my track and I've managed to get the six axle SD45 to go around the track without falling off. So that's good news because I really like this size of locomotive and I want to be getting them in the future. So thank you very much, Mike. And as I say, his link's up there and in the description. If you want to go and check out his channel, I would appreciate that because I appreciate all the support I'm getting so far. Okay, let's have a quick look around the layout and see what on earth I'm planning this time. So this side will all be town, town, and there will be a road going round the entire outside, and it will rejoin the road there, so there'll be a road loop. I'll talk about the road later, because it's going to converge at this point, and it's going to become kind of a mountain road that runs a little bit lower than the track. Up here, there will be sort of mountainous area, the track cuts into the mountain, it carries on down, but as I say, the road will be going a little bit lower. This stage here, obviously, I'm going to have a valley, probably a river, not a huge river. The embankments will come down a bit there to there, so there'll be a river here, but I'm not just coming straight with the river. It'll probably meander a little bit, come down here. Maybe not here because I've got points, but obviously I'm going to need another bridge because the river just wouldn't stop. So it'll be a much shallower bridge there. Also, I'm going to need a road bridge here because the road is going to continue all the way around. So up there will be probably a little mountain station on this side. So the trains can come in, stop at the station and the mainline train can still keep going. The great thing is because I'm going to be making all this a DCC system, I can run more than one train at once. So although I've only got one mainline loop, I can have multiple trains, and as long as I've got sidings for them to stop, I can keep everything rolling. So, this section here is going to split off to a, a siding slash route to the industrial area, which is over here. So that'll be a mixture of industrial and just where I can keep all the locos, so I don't have to keep taking them on and off the tracks all the time. So I've got plenty of space there. I might do a sort of... Hamilton Steel Mill Industrial Area over here. 
and it'll transition into the hills and then the mountains here and then come into this little town. So, time to grab my printer paper and sharpen my Sharpie. Get planning. This will be interesting. So with that road layout, it looks like I've got enough room for about five buildings in the main town centre. And then if this area extends all the way up to the mountain, oh, maybe six more buildings. So plenty for my wife to be getting on with. We have no idea what sort of buildings we're going to use yet. Maybe just drive around the local area and see what we like. And then replicate it in 187 size. Right, let me talk about the road system. It would be a bit unbalanced on a layout for all your lovely trains going round if your cars are just static. Kind of takes away the realism. Basically, this is alive and everything else is dead. Now, obviously, you can add lights and all that kind of thing to flash at traffic lights and all that kind of thing. But if you've got a car that goes to traffic lights, you know, and the lights are green, then it's like, why are you not going? So, here's my plan. You've possibly heard of a company called Magnorail. I think they're European, maybe German. It's quite clever that way. And they made a system, it's kind of like slot cars, but without the slot, using plastic chain and magnets. So I'm going to make the budget version of that using bicycle chains, bicycle sprockets, magnets, and a 12 volt power supply and it shouldn't cost more than $100. <clears throat> we'll see. So let me show you roughly how that's going to work. The chain will get embedded into the road, and this is why I've got inch and a half foam, so I can cut into the foam, bury the chain. The chain will basically lie on its side so that it can curve, so it can curve around there. Obviously, I need to make this a yield or give way junction because it's not going to stop. It can continue round here and then it'll go around one of the cogs at some point and then come back the way. The chain will continue, except instead of coming down this way, the chain will go around that way, all the way around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, and come back here. And that's just one loop. Now, I could add other chains with other cogs and have maybe a car coming this way. But let's start with the basics. So I will have a similar loop. It'll be a single chain going all the way around here. I do have a bit of an issue there because I'm going to have to build this chain into a bridge and along here. And then I'll do a similar loop and it'll come back onto the same road again all the way back here. And go back onto the road and continue its journey uh, that way. Something like that. 
early stages of planning that, but I think it's going to add a huge other dimension to this whole layout. My wife actually wants this to go round the, the drive through in the Tim Hortons and stop, so I would need all sorts of fancy sensors on my DCC system with Arduino and, oh my goodness, it's going to get complicated. But that is how we're going to overcome the single potential boring loop with other stuff moving on the inside of the layout. Ambitious? Sure. Impossible? Definitely not. I think it's going to work out really, really good. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I have got to get this section done first and I have to start cutting in and making the road system because I've got to keep my wife happy because she is going to be in charge of all this, basically. She'll be supervising me. She'll be making most of the models and I can work on my dirty industrial area later on, but I've got to get started on this first. So that is my plan. Get this laid out. And the reason I've used uh, just A4 sheets of paper is if I mess it up, I can take that sheet out and put in a new sheet. If I was to buy the big sheets of card, then you're wasting a whole sheet at a time. Do you know what I mean? So also I've got tons of this cheap copy paper lying about. Sorry trees, sorry planet. I can use the other side and reuse it. So, and then recycle it or something. Okay, that is all I am doing for now. Well, it's all you're getting to see me doing for now. Next update will probably be more on 3D printing because these cars that I've made so far, they're just not quite to scale. I think Bugsy needs to be a bit bigger. Bugsy is my real car that sits outside. And the good thing is if I make it a little bit bigger, then it's going to be less delicate. I also need to establish a way to make the wheels turn because at the moment they're just glued on. The wheels obviously have to turn if they're going to be used on this Magnarel budget system. Again, these wheels aren't glued on, but there is space in the inside for an axle. So I need to work on that. So stay tuned for more 3D printing adventures. Thank you to all my new subscribers. I just, as of now, just got over 200 subscribers, which is totally amazing considering I've only really been doing this for about a month, five weeks. So thank you very much. It's nice to know that the community is thriving out there. I'm loving this. I'm loving this uh, this new hobby. I wish I'd started it years ago. Take care, everyone. I'll see you very soon. As I say, probably on 3D printing. Oh, we got a new colour. Beige resin. You can figure out what I'm going to be using that for. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.